Are you considering an exciting new opportunity to supplement your income? Does it involve selling products from home to friends and family? And at the same time, recruiting those same friends and family to also become sales agents under you? If so, keep watching. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Namofsky, host of Finances Personal. With the COVID lockdowns and so many people working from home or even worse, out of work, the lure of a side job is huge. Now we all need a bit of extra income and being your own boss always sounds great, but due diligence is always essential before accepting any offer. But what are the questions that you should be asking? Today, I'm joined by Julie Wildman, insolvency trustee and proposal administrator with Hoyes, Michelos and Associates, Inc. to discuss the difference between a direct sales company, multi-level marketing scheme and a pyramid scheme. Hi, Julie. Welcome back to Finances Personal. I'm so happy that you could be here because I really want to talk about this topic that it has become trendy and it's on everyone's minds right now. So let's begin. What is multi-level marketing? Okay. So multi-level marketing companies or network selling businesses, they go by different names. They're all the same sort. Um, they are a multi, multi-billion dollar companies. If you were to Google top MLMs, you'll see a list of very familiar company names. Think kitchen gadgets, specialty food storage containers, essential oils, makeup, diet products, vitamins, even leggings. Um, the companies that sell these goods are well-known and they're also famously litigious. So I'm not actually gonna name any of them. You don't have <laughs> um, to. <laughs> MLMs can be a particularly divisive topic, actually. Um, there are people that you know, are, are vehement supporters of, supporters of them. And then there's others that believe that they're really only a hair away from being an illegal pyramid scheme. Uh, and as a matter of fact, a lot of these companies will go to great lengths to tell you that they're not a pyramid scheme, despite their you know, suspiciously triangular shaped business model. Um, but to, to their credit, most of them are not ML, uh, MLMs are not pyramid schemes for, for one reason, and that's that they actually sell a physical product. Oh, okay. So, you know, the reason why I wanted to do this show is because a lot of people have been hit hard by COVID. A lot of people have lost their jobs or they're trying to supplement their income. And this topic on multi-level marketing has surfaced and, you know, I've been reading so much about it and that's why I wanted to talk to you about it because the way that you read it now, it, it seems that it's, you know, it's a new thing very much not a new thing actually they've been around for decades um if you think about a well-known sales company for makeup in particular the one where you get a nice pink cadillac if you reach a certain sales level um they actually initially found success in the 60s when people left the you know the hubs of the cities to start establishing suburbs suddenly the housewives were away from the department stores and they had a hard time buying their makeup and beauty products so their friendly neighborhood sales lady would come to the door and allow them to make those purchases in their own home. And then, you know, if you fast forward to today, uh, you've got them, that company still around. Uh, and then you've got the more modern contemporaries and it makes you easily shopping from your couch, the comfort of your own home. So the products that these companies sell actually can't be purchased in regular stores to, to that point. Um, they're exclusive, they're often on the expensive end of the spectrum of that type of a product, and they can only be purchased through these representatives, consultants, coaches, whatever they happen to call their salespeople. And, and that's where they want you to come in. So I don't, I, 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 if you could just explain to me how they work, because I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> no problem. So it is actually important to understand how they really work. So yes, they sell a product, but truthfully, the product that they're selling is almost irrelevant. Um, once you get into one of these businesses, what you're really doing is recruiting or selling, as I like to call it, the dream. Um, you're not an entrepreneur, unfortunately, no matter what they're going to tell you. You're signing up to sell a product. When you sell that product, you earn a commission on your sale. And then whoever recruited you into the company is also going to make a commission on that sale and the person that recruited them and on and on. So that's called the upstream or the upline. Every company has a different word for it. Um, but effectively, what you're going to find is that the commission you end up making on each sale is not actually a lot of money. And it doesn't take long for people to figure out that you really need to be building your own downstream uh, or downline, so people below you, so that you can earn commission on their sales as well. And then you're going to want them to recruit more people, you know, and on and on it goes. 
So a lot of the times when people have found success in these companies, the sale of the actual product is almost an afterthought because their primary focus really is building the team beneath them. So, yeah, that, that was going to be my question. I mean, it, it, are you selling a product or are, are you recruiting? So you're really doing both. Um, to be successful in the, the MLM businesses, you have to be constantly on the prowl. Every friend, every family member, casual acquaintance, everyone you meet is a potential customer um, or even a recruit for the business. And that can cause a lot of strain on your personal relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, consider how many times are your friends or family going to want to listen to your sales pitch on lip gloss or organic vitamins or essential oils before they block you on social media. They start avoiding your phone calls. Uh, or even worse, if you do recruit someone that you're close with into the company to be part of your downstream and they don't find success, um, who do you think they're going to hold responsible? So, you know, it's a bit of an online uh, on running joke in online moms groups. You know, there's always that one mom in the group that's trying to sell something or you hear the stories of people getting the message in their inbox from someone they used to go to high school with. Um, you know, and, and they start off saying, oh, I saw some pictures of you. Looks like you've gained a little weight. You know, I've got the perfect solution for that. If you just click this link. So I, I'm a little confused here because I have heard multi-level marketing, but now I've heard this new term, which is um, network marketing. What's the difference between the two? Okay. Well, network marketing company is really just a pseudonym for MLMs. There used to be much more of a distinction between the two primarily in their compensation structure, but they've really evolved to be almost identical. Um, they both require that you're selling within your network. They both have multiple levels to their commission structures and actually government and consumer protection agencies essentially group them together as the same type of company. Um, interestingly, low, uh, a lot of MLMs are sort of using this as the new shield to pretend that they're not an MLM. So they'll say, oh, no, we're not an MLM. We're a network marketing company, even though the structure is identical to the MLM you know, next door. Um, and what you'll also find is people that join the network marketing companies as they're advertised are, are very adamant that they are not part of an MLM. They are part of a network marketing company. But I always sort of argue that if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then. <laughs> and, and ultimately, a lot of the cautions that I'm kind of trying to give here would apply equally to both. So how much does it cost to join a, a multi-level marketing I, I, I don't know. Is it, is it a job? Uh, <laughs> I, I, honestly, like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. How much is it to get into one of them basically? Okay. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Um, you have to purchase inventory, whatever you're going to be selling, of course. Um, often that sold to you as a startup kit. They love to show that they've got exclusive perks that you can only get if you're a member of the team. That's how they, again, encourage you to, to jump on board here. Um, it's going to be a different cost for every company. Some are going to be a few hundred dollars. Others are going to be thousands of dollars. And what often happens is that people that are trying to recruit you will even suggest that you put this startup cost on your personal credit card. Um, you know, you're going to be making so much money in no time you can pay it back. Don't worry about it. Just put it on your credit card. And, you know, it, they're often very persuasive people. So there you go. You've got your inventory. Um, it shows up at your house, but now you have to sell it. Right. Uh, and this is where people start to drop off immediately uh, as they realize I, I don't know how to sell or nobody that I know is interested or wants to or, you know, it's too expensive. They just can't get move the product. Um, as I mentioned, they're often expensive. Or it would expire. Yeah. Yeah. You could be sitting on it for too long. Mm -hmm. So interestingly there you know a lot of these products are advertised of as being of superior quality or you know some some things that, that something sorry that sets them apart but if you look at how many people have to get paid off of each sale it becomes apparent what the markup on those products is actually about um so just to come back i mean some people will have initial success with the sales and, and that's great and they're going to get a commission check from those sales but the question is, what are they going to do with that check? So are they going to take that check and then pay off that initial credit card? Yep, they're right. I made some money. I'm going to pay it back. But you're in the same spot. You need more inventory. So do you use that check and maybe a bit more from your credit card to buy next month's inventory? So, you know, it starts to snowball a little bit at that point, which is concerning. Um, 
And that's not the only expense that you can run into with an MLM either. Um, a lot of them are known for hosting these really over the top sort of splashy conferences and beautiful exotic or exciting locations. Um, if you know anyone that's involved in one of these companies sort of at a, a sort of higher level often, they'll flood their social media feed with these beautiful pictures and you know envy inducing videos when they're at these conferences. And if you're in their downstream, if you're on their team and you're struggling with sales, you better believe that they're going to suggest, oh, just come to the conference this year. You know, you're going to pick up so much information. You're going to learn so many things. Uh, you get all these good vibes. All the sister boss babes are going to be there <laughs> and you'll be out of your slump. So back to the cost, you know, now you're paying for airfare, for a hotel, for the registration fees. These conferences are not free. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you don't turn your sales around, it's probable that you're going to start feeling like it's you that's the problem because you did the conference, you're doing all this stuff. So, you know, then you're starting to feel bad about yourself and maybe you're going to start, you know, fudging your sales a little bit, selling to yourself essentially to make it look like your sales have picked up. Um, you know, and, and that feeds into another problem is that a lot of the way that these companies try to motivate people is with titles or, you know, the carrot on the stick, so to speak. So you're going to get fancy letters, um, welcoming you to the diamond club, or they're going to start making payments on a fancy car for you, whatever it happens to be. And it's a great stroke for the ego, but you have to keep at that level to get there. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're about to lose your fancy car because you're not going to make the sales target that month, you better believe there's a real temptation to just sell it to yourself, put it on your credit card. You know, I can make it back next month. It's no big deal. And then suddenly, you know, you're in a, a really bad cycle where you're constantly um, trying to pay off all of this extra required sales so that you can keep the appearance of having attained that rank. You know, that to me seems like a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure on on everything to put food on your table, uh, to you know be successful, to buy product, to and and it makes me just think about you know FOMO, the fear of missing out. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of people are having FOMO right now with trading. A lot of people are having FOMO with you know not, not having great enough photos for um, Instagram. A lot of people like there's so much FOMO going on right now, and and you know YOLO, you only live once. And, and this to me just seems like it exacerbates that whole, that whole feeling. It really does. And that's why I call it selling the dream because a lot of the ways they recruit people in is, is that idyllic lifestyle that they're able to use as a sales pitch. So let's say I'm considering uh, uh, joining multi-level marketing because not all of them are bad. Um, there, I mean, just like any industry, there, there's mm -hmm. good, there's bad, there's better, there's worse. I, I mean, every industry goes through that. But if I am thinking of doing this for myself, what are the questions that I need to ask just so that I know that I will be successful or there will be some sort of success on my end? Okay. So the questions that I would say are critical before you get into an MLM are, do you like selling? Do you like and are good at sales? And do you like recruiting? Um, you know, the bringing people in to be on your team. If you say yes to both of those, then the next level to consider would be where are you going to get your startup money from? Um, how much time and effort are you really willing to de devote to this business? Did you think it was going to be a side gig or is this a full time thing for you? Um, who are you going to be selling to? Who are you going to be recruiting from? Those are really the basic. It doesn't matter which company it is. Those are all questions that you need to ask yourself. And so how do I pick best one to join for me? So if you do decide you're going to get into it, there's a lot of MLMs to pick from, of course. So some important things that you should consider are things like how long has the company been around? You know, if they've been around for a long time, um, that means that their products are probably at least, you know, uh, a reliable product. Um, do you believe in what you're selling? You know, it's, it's pretty transparent when people don't enjoy or believe in the product they're selling. Whereas if you, if you use and really love the product, it's a lot easier to sell. So make sure you're joining an MLM for something that you actually enjoy and use and believe in. Um, is there a demand for the product? Uh, if, if your network is not the type of people that are ever going to want or use the product, you're going to have a heck of a time selling it. Mm -hmm. um, how does the compensation work? You know, how much is that commission 
per sale? Uh, how much do you have to pay up and down in your stream and things like that? How much inventory do you have to carry? There's some places that make you purchase a minimum amount of inventory every month. Um, you don't want to be in one of those. You want to hopefully be able to return any unsold inventory. Some of them do allow you to do that, but not all of them. Um, and of course, what's the initial investment and how can you fund it? And, you know, pro tip, don't use your credit card. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're never supposed to use our credit card for anything, quite frankly, yeah. unless we know that we can pay it off every month. Exactly. And that's the problem. A lot of people put everything on credit and think they'll just pay the minimum. Yep. And then when you look at that little slide on the side of your credit card, it tells you it's going to take How long? eight years to pay yeah. it off. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we need to pay attention to stuff like this. And, you know, it made me think women have struggled the most during COVID, mm -hmm. you know, um, we work in the service industry and restaurants have been shut down. Hair salons have been shut down. Um, eyelash places have been shut down. Nail salons, uh, you name it. It's the majority of women who work in these industries mm -hmm. and, you know, they've had to work. Um, they've lost their jobs or have had limited uh, amount of work. They've had to make sure that they um, supplied childcare to their children, homeschooling. There's a lot going on. And I've been reading a lot about the fact that um, multi-level marketing actually targets women more than they target men. Yeah, they really do. Women are the biggest target of MLM and mothers even more so. Um, I mean, they are popular also with uh, low income or minority groups that are looking for ways to pay off debt and help with financial struggles. Um, MLMs, they, they appeal to people who have good intentions. They want to earn income for their family. They want to find a better work life balance. They want to pursue. Yeah, exactly. They're looking to pursue some kind of a passion or find a way to pay off debt. You know, if you think about the recruiting slogans that they're throwing out at people, earn extra money, establish a passive income, um, improve your life and your health or live your best life, be your own boss or things, you know, be able to take care of your own kids, retire now. All the promises that they carry along with the hashtags that are thrown all over social media of, you know, mompreneurs and girl boss and boss babes. Um, they prey on a woman's desire to have and do it all. Uh, they want to contribute to the family financially while having the time to be a devoted wife or mother. And really, when you see the beautiful pictures, who wouldn't fantasize about inserting themselves into you know, the ocean side cocktail hour with a gaggle of beautiful women sipping fancy cocktails? I'd like to be there. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just it. I mean, we all want to be able to put food on the table plus, plus, plus for our family, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to struggle. You don't want to struggle. I know other people don't want to. So if there is a great opportunity, why not jump at it? But you actually said something really interesting to me, and it, it just stuck with me. Um, only one out of 100 are successful. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the question sort of becomes, can you actually make money in an MLM? And the answer is it's possible to make money in an MLM, but it's highly improbable to make money in an MLM. Um, the statistics that are published by the Federal Trade Commission suggest that for every hundred people, as you mentioned, only one is going to make money. Um, 50 are going to quit in the first year of being within the MLM, uh, 90 by five years and by 10 years, 95% of people have dropped out. Um, to be fair, I do personally know some people that have actually attained a high level of success in these companies, but they're constantly. You know what? I do too. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a friend uh, and her husband has done really, really well and I'm, you know, proud and happy but that's not the norm. Yeah. So see if this strikes a chord, then the people I know, you know, they're constantly hustling, they're selling, they're marketing, they're recruiting, they're working on their social media profiles. It is a full-time job and they're passionate about it and they love doing it. you know, that's like you said, that's great. I'm really happy for those people that have found the success, but that's the same personality traits that you find in successful people in other fields as well. It's not necessarily tied specifically to the MLM. So, you know, while those few people have attained great success, they are the anecdotes. And that's not the story for most people. And, you know, I, I work in personal insolvency, as you know, and I unfortunately run across a lot of people who have ended up on the, the very far other side that have ended in, in significant debt from trying to have a go at these MLMs.
And that's one of the questions I was going to ask you. Um, you must have heard incredible stories, um, seen and, and heard, you know, gone through incredible scenarios of people that have, uh, that need help. Yeah. It's oftentimes, um, you know, as I was mentioning, chasing that next level or, or trying to maintain the facade that it's all working and it's all okay. But especially in the midst of COVID and the economic uncertainty of the pandemic, people are very vulnerable right now to make potentially poor decisions. Um, and they're made with the best of intent to try and establish income or some kind of stability. And there's no shame in, in trying to do that. Absolutely. Um, you know, and ultimately everyone's going to have to decide for themselves if they want to give the MLM a go as a, as a you know, way to do that for themselves. But if you're getting into it as a way to pay off debt, or if you do get into it and you end up in a mountain of debt, don't be afraid to call someone like myself. You know, we're, we're happy to offer you a free consultation to go through your options on how to get out from under the debt um, and educate you on the resources that are out there for how we can help you do it. You know, I often tell everyone, ask questions. Mm -hmm. My mother always said, if you don't ask, you don't know. Exactly. And the thing is, I've often said, you know, I will never, ever, ever um, fail at anything. And it's because I surround myself with some pretty incredible people. So if I have a question, I'll pick up the phone and I'll call you, or I'll pick up the phone and call another guest and, or, or I'll pick up the phone and contact somebody who I've never even spoken to before. <laughs> but, you know, I, because I want, I'm very curious, I want to know answers and I want to be able to help myself and help other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is no shame in asking, asking for help. Exactly. It's not a sign of weakness. No. It's a sign of strength, I think. And I think that's a perfect way to end this on a very happy and strength worthy note. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Well, thank you so much. Take care. We're all having to adapt to life under COVID. And often that means considering things that we never even thought possible before. Life is different in 2021. A new job is always exciting and often a bit scary, but there are some questions that we really have to consider. Number one, do you understand the difference between direct sales, multi-level marketing, and a pyramid? Two, have you done enough research so that you really understand what you're getting into? Three, have you read the contractual obligations and do you really understand them? Just as my episode on payday loans, the truth is in the details and the details are always located in the fine print. Four, are you realistically going to make money? Do you know exactly how much product that you'll have to sell each month? And what happens if you can't sell it? Five, if you're buying product to sell, what's the cost after credit card interest? Six, how do you leave if you've decided that you've changed your mind? What happens then? Just because you're afraid, it doesn't mean that the job is a scam. All legitimate businesses will agree that there are some unethical and bad players in the space, but not everyone is bad. And if you are in a desperate situation, you should talk to somebody such as a friend or a professional before you jump in and take the first opportunity that comes along. Just remember an ounce of prevention or research in this case is worth a pound of cure. Ask the tough questions before you sign anything. And finally, if you're buried in debt, watch my episode on insolvency trustees to get an idea of your options. Now, if you like this video, please click like and read the disclaimer in my YouTube description because disclaimers and fine print are very important. Please look out for my next episode and remember just to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll automatically get new video alerts and follow me on Twitter at Enomofsky. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.